I'm Tommy Benton and I'm the State Representative for House District 31 and I'm here today to uh, talk a little bit about House Resolution 644. House Resolution 644 was a resolution that was introduced into the House of, Re House of Representatives at the request of the former head of the uh, National Sons Confederate Veterans. Uh, this is something that has been done in the past. It was also, he is also on the uh, Georgia Civil War Commission, which in the past has been able to get resolutions passed uh, and issued honoring uh, uh, Confederate History Month, which is April, and Confederate Memorial Day, which is April 26. Now, the media has uh, seemed to go out of its way to try and make this something that it's not. We are not creating anything that is not already in code. Uh, Confederate Heritage Month and Confederate Memorial Day have been celebrated for a long time. In fact, Confederate Memorial Day has been celebrated in the state of Georgia since 1874. So the resolution in itself created nothing. It simply was a recognition of the Southern soldier, his valor, his willingness to go and fight for something that he believed in, and that was the reason for the resolution. Now, with the media uh, playing it up as being something that is, that is creating something, we have uh, gotten quite a bit of press, uh, negative press, on something that should have been nothing more than to honor uh, our Southern heritage. Uh, we have had groups that have uh, stood up and said that uh, this was nothing but moving backwards and, uh, and an attempt to resurrect something that is already there. Now, these groups also claim that what we need to be in Georgia and the rest of the country is tolerant uh, of all groups, but they seem unwilling to grant the very thing that they're wanting to be done is they are unwilling to be tolerant of those that want to celebrate our Confederate heritage. Uh, it's the same old song and dance. Uh, if they don't have an answer to what we are uh, talking about, they revert to name calling. And I can tell you that I've been called every name in the book. And uh, my house has been called. My wife has been upset. Uh, and these things are not part of a, quote, tolerant society. And so today I wanted to make sure that everybody in the press understands that we are not attempting to create anything. We are simply... We're simply asking the House of Representatives to honor our Southern heritage. Now, the next person to speak is uh, Scott Gilbert. We're going to give him a few minutes to talk, and then uh, he'll introduce our next speaker. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. When we get done, if anybody needs a, a contact information card from us, uh, they, they will be up here and, and we'll be more than happy to, uh, to uh, speak with you when we get done. As Mr. Uh, Representative Benton said, my name is Scott Gilbert. I'm the commander of the Georgia Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, of the International Sons of Confederate Veterans, uh, SCV for short. The SCV is a fraternal, historical, educational association of male descendants of Confederate soldiers that served honorably during the war between the states. We are a registered nonprofit headquartered in Columbia, Tennessee. Our camps, and a camp being our word for chapter, are located in more than 30 states in the United States of America and in five foreign countries. We are non-sectional, sectional, non-racial, and non-political. We cannot and do not endorse political parties or political candidates in elections, but we do reserve the right to address our government leaders on matters of patriotic importance, and that is exactly why we are here today. We're here today in response to recent comments in the, in the news 
about Confederate history and heritage, specifically as they relate to H.R. 644. And in a few moments, I'm going to introduce our official spokesman, Mr. Charles Lunsford, but I do want to make a, a few brief comments, if I may. As Representative Benton has discussed, and we believe, that this is a relatively small group of people who are trying to, um, trying to make news out of something that is already uh, on the books. And their comments, uh, and we say with respect, but our, but our opinion is that these comments that others have made are un undignified, they are personally offensive, and they're absolutely not true. The Sons of Confederate Veterans works very, very hard to teach the true history of that era. It's the bloodiest conflict in the history of America. It is very important to the history of Georgia, and we teach the history fair, or fair without uh, editing. We know that there is, uh, in the course of history, in every war and every period, whether it be in the Bible or whether it be in a history book or on the monuments that surround the Capitol building, that there's always something in history that someone may find offensive. And history is just that, is the history of mankind's treatment against other parts of mankind. And it's not always pleasant, but we tell the truth and we would like for others to do the same. It also seems a little bit intellectually disingenuous that the same standards that people recently have applied to Confederate and Georgia history somehow are not applied to things like the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution and the many proclamations and resolutions that have been issued each year for years by the Governor's Office and the General Assembly. At this time, I would like to uh, introduce our division spokesman, Mr. Charles Lunsford, and thank you. As C Commander Gilbert mentioned, uh, the legislative bodies in this building issue many different commemorative documents each year for a wide variety of groups and associations and parts of the state, even sometimes industries and, and businesses. We have been receiving these kinds of commemorations for 143 years. As they've both mentioned, nothing new is happening here. The only thing new is that for some reason, uh, people who exclaim how they are for diversity are trying to wipe us out of the memory of these commemorations. People who say we should all accept one another as equals and be friendly and accepting are not being friendly and accepting towards us. We're here today to say that nothing is new or different. Since 1874, every April, there are thousands of events throughout the state. You wouldn't know it by the coverage, but there are thousands of events throughout the state commemorating the period of Southern independence that we call the war between the states or the war for Southern independence. We're not a secession group. We're not trying to change anything. We're just trying to remember our history, and that's all. And we've done the same thing every year. This year again, there will be thousands of events around the state. We'll deliver wreaths. We'll put small flags on graves of dead soldiers. We'll have banquets and dinners and speeches just like we do every year. Nothing's different except the clamor by some people to eradicate our cultural heritage from the state. The questions shouldn't be addressed to us because we've answered them all for 143 years. You need to turn around and ask those people who are doing this why they're doing it, why now, why after all these years they're deciding to attack us when we really haven't done anything to them. 
again, we invite you to any of our events around the state. Come and see what it's all about. See who we are. I doubt that will happen. You will probably be ignored again so that the only people that we will see on the news will be the, the stray person who does something bad. But we are a community, a large community representing millions of people who are kind, gracious people, ladies and gentlemen, and we only ask to be treated with the same respect that other people demand that they be treated. Thank you. All right, now we'll take some questions as they pertain to the resolution only. Uh, Tommy, I know the Confederate Memorial Day was for years observed on, I think, April 26th in Georgia. Has it ever been officially struck from the state code or repealed from the list of official state holidays? So, so that everyone will know what the question was, uh, the question was, has Confederate Memorial Day been struck from official code? Uh, we are not aware of that. All that was taken was the name from the holiday. April 26, whether it has Confederate Memorial Day on it or not, will be Confederate Memorial Day to us. Next question. I have not spoken with the governor or nor any of his staff. We're not asking for the governor to do anything. This was a House resolution only, just like we do resolutions honoring all kinds of groups all the time. Next question. Charleston, of course, seemed to change the conversation about many of these symbols. How do you address that in the larger conversation? Um, I'll let uh, Mr. Lunsford speak to that. In the South over the last hundred years, if you were selling something, whether it be a widget or a strange political philosophy, you wrapped yourself in the Confederate flag because the people out there loved it so much. We've had to endure that over the years, people grabbing it and saying, it's mine, it's mine. Actually, it's ours. Uh, it belonged to the Confederate veterans themselves, and they voted in 1927 to give it to us as the sons of Confederate veterans. If you really want to know what it means, what our ancestors said it meant, and what they were doing, just ask us, and we'll be certainly glad to tell you. But to infer it from a criminal, because they wrap themselves in it to try to curry favor with Southerners is wrong. And I hope all Southerners will reject anyone who misuses one of our symbols of our history to do wrong. Next question. Yes, ma'am. You're expecting uh, just this to be a House resolution and not any response from the governor. Are you expecting this to maybe pass in the House? Or are you expecting this to be The, the question, and I don't know whether y'all could hear it on camera, was do I think that the resolution will pass since it's just a House resolution? Is that a pretty fair statement there? Um, I don't know. I've asked for it to be heard. It was assigned to the Rules Committee. I've asked the chairman for a, a hearing on it. I uh, don't know whether I will be granted that or not. But uh, the, the thing here is that it should never have been a controversy. All it was was a privileged resolution to honor what is, has been done for other months of the year that, are, that honor other groups. Next, next question. The resolution states recognizing April as Confederate History Month and April 26, 2017 as Confederate Memorial Day. And it goes on, and we even honored one of Atlanta's most famous citizens as being uh, a Confederate soldier, John Pemberton, 
And for those out there in the audience that don't know who he was, he was the inventor of Coca-Cola. So, uh, and we, we have done that and every resolution that has been given by the governor's office or any or either of the legislative bodies, we have always uh, remembered people who were who were part of that heritage. Yes, ma'am. Um, the resolution you moved to refer to the uh, war as a four-year struggle for states' rights and individual freedom, and it calls to encourage citizens to remember the history. Do you think that including uh, slavery as part of that conversation is important to understanding the whole history? Uh, Slavery is not part of the resolution. Why would that be? Why did we not put it in there? Because we're not honoring slavery. We are honoring Confederate Memorial Day and Confederate and Southern history. Should it not be included in there as an acknowledgement of what the war was fought about? Uh, next question. I'll answer that. No. We, okay. If... if Y'all want to get into a, uh, a discussion over the causes of the, of the uh, war between the states, we'll be glad to have uh, 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 groups from both sides to come in and, we, and televise it live, and, and we'll be glad to discuss it that way. Next question. Yes, ma'am. When they, what may, you, the question was, uh, I, I said that uh, people had called my house and said things that had upset my wife. Uh, when they're using vulgar language, uh, that type of thing, they've also called my office and used language toward my administrative assistant that should not be used. And that's a common tactic. That, that people like this use as they, they try to bully you down. Next question. Being no further questions, we appreciate y'all coming today. Thank you very much.